Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching the videos of analytical chemistry in English. Okay. In this lecture, we will see what are the different types of the analytical techniques, what we have already studied and what we want to study now. Okay. And in this lecture, especially we will see solvent extraction technique. Okay. Solvent extraction technique, all the basics of it and whatever you need here, you will see here. Okay. So, see this video and one thing that I want to tell you, see here, we have started both the Hindi and the English playlist, okay. I have already made a Hindi video lectures for you also, a whole Hindi lectures playlist I have made and you will see Hindi videos on the Tuesday, okay. Tuesday I will open a Hindi video and the English video I will open at the Saturday, okay. So, if you want to see the lectures in English, then you can see our lectures of Saturday. And if you want to see the lectures of Hindi, you can see the lectures at the Tuesday. Okay. So, first of all, press the bell icon so that you can get the proper notifications for the lectures. Alright. Now, we are starting our lecture. See here, analytical chemistry is basically the analysis of the substance. And the analysis can be done by the two ways. First of all, that way is the qualitative analysis and the second way is the quantitative analysis. What is qualitative analysis? Qualitative analysis means just we have given a mixture of the sample and we have to find out the presence of particular components in the mixture. It means how many types of components are present in that particular sample. Okay. The second important technique is the quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis means if we have given a mixture and we have to determine the amount of particular components in the mixture. Okay. We will have to find out the weight or the volume of the particular component in the mixture. Then it is called the quantitative analysis. Now this thing is clear. Okay. Now we have to see whatever types of the analytical technique we have to study here. In your course, there are different types of the analytical techniques. First type of technique is the separation technique in which you will see here one technique is the chromatography and one is the solvent extraction. And this solvent extraction technique we will see in this lecture. Okay. Second is the thermoanalytical techniques. These are the TGA. TGA means thermo gravimetric analysis. DTA. DTA means differential thermal analysis. And the third technique is DSC. DSC means differential scanning calorimetry. Okay. So, these three are the thermoanalytical techniques. There are several many other techniques that we can study but we does not need to see them because in your question papers these three techniques are asked. Okay. And I have already made a lecture on this particular topic okay so you can go to our playlist of analytical chemistry and you can see the thermoanalytical techniques okay next type of the techniques are the electroanalytical techniques one of the important technique is the polarography another one is voltammetry and one is the potentiometry out of this this polarography technique is very much important this is very very important technique and i have already made a lecture on this technique so you can see the video of polarography in the analytical chemistry playlist. Okay, all, I have already made it. Next, you can see the techniques are spectroscopic techniques. Out of which one is the atomic absorption spectroscopy, AAS, and another one is atomic emission spectroscopy. Okay, both of techniques we will see in our lectures. Then, next comes the volumetric analysis. Volumetric analysis means titrations okay here we have to study titrations and the one of the important types are the acid based titrations complexometric titration this is very much important from this topic several times questions has been asked here so this is a very important technique and i have already made a lecture on the complexometric titration you can see that lecture then there is redox titration conductometric titration and potentiometric titration okay and out of which conductometric titration and potentiometric titration i have made the videos on these also so you can see these lectures that i have already made and the next lectures i will be prepare here okay the next technique is the gravimetric analysis okay so there are several techniques that we have already studied in our lectures you can see that lectures and some of the topics are remaining that we will see in our incoming lectures. Okay. So, these lectures you will get in the Saturday. Okay. So, press the bell icon so that you can get the proper notifications. Let us start the solvent extraction deck. Okay. 
सो सोलवेंट एक्सट्रेक्शन टेक्निक इज एक्चुअली अ लिक्विड लिक्विड एक्सट्रेक्शन टेक्निक ओके एज यू कैन सी फ्रॉम द नेम वॉट इज रिटिन इयर सोलवेंट एक्सट्रेक्शन इट मीन्स द सोल्यूट इज बींग सेपरेटेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ सोलवेंट ओके एंड हियर वी आर टेकिंग टू डिफरेंट सोलवेंट दीज टू सोलवेंट आर इमिसिबल ओके वी कैन नॉट मिक्स these two solvents these are immiscible solvents like we can take water and ether any other solvents that are immiscible you can take here okay so this is actually a liquid liquid extraction technique because we are taking the solution of one of the solvent suppose we are taking aqua solution okay it means our sample is present in water right and we are adding to it any organic solvent now we are adding to it an organic solvent so what will happen if the solubility of this sample is more in the organic solvent then some part of this will dissolve in the organic solvent okay so in this way this will get separated some of the amount of the solute will transfer to the second solvent okay so in this way the solute is being separated and for this purpose we are using a separatory funnel solvent extraction is done generally with the help of separatory funnel so see here what is the structure of separatory funnel so see here the separatory funnel will look like this okay this is the separatory funnel okay i have just made here the simple diagram you can see the proper diagram in the books okay so in the separatory funnel what you have to do firstly you have to take the first solvent okay suppose we are taking the aqua solution of the sample okay so this will be our first phase right so we have filled here this first phase like this this is our phase 1 now what you are doing you are adding here another phase suppose this is the organic solvent and then we are pouring it here okay so this will make our second phase like this these two solvents are immiscible okay these two solvents are immiscible so they will make two separate layers okay this is phase 1 and this is phase 2 right now what you have to do when you have put put it here then you have to shake it okay when you are shaking it what will happen this will increase the surface area for the mixing of two phases okay so what will happen the sample a little amount of the sample or the solute will go into the second phase okay once you have done it what you have to do you have to put this for separating okay when the extraction is complete that two liquids are allowed to separate what will happen the denser phase the phase that is denser one will go on the bottom okay and the less denser phase will go on the top okay then you can separate this by this okay here you can separate this so this is the whole method this method is very rapid okay what is its advantages this method is very much rapid and it is convenient method and you get a clean separation right secondly this technique can be used for traces of sample as well as for the large amounts of sample it means if you have given either the little amount of sample or you have given a large amount of sample in both the cases you can use this method okay now we see the basic principle of this method or what is the theory behind it see here what is its theory or you can say it basic principle suppose we have given a solute a okay we have given a solute that is named a and it is to be distributed between two immiscible solvents a and b these are the two solvents okay so we can use the nernest distribution law when we have placed these two solvents with the sample in the separatory funnel and when you have made it shaken okay then what will happen this solute a will distribute itself between the two solvents a and b okay so what amount had been distributed what is the fraction that can be find by the nernest distribution law according to the nernest distribution law concentration of solute in solvent a divided by 
कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ सॉल्यूट इन सॉल्वेंट V इज इक्वल टू दिस इज द कंसंट्रेशन दिस विल बी इक्वल टू के डी वॉट इज दिस के डी दिस के डी दिस के डी इज कॉल्ड द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कॉफिशियंट और वी कैन कॉल इट पार्टीशन कॉफिशियंट ओके बट वन थिंग यू शुड नोट हियर दैट दिस नर्नेस्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लॉ दैट यू हैव सीन हियर दिस लॉ इज कैन बी यूज ओनली दिस इज वैलिड ओनली when the molecular state of solute is same in both the liquids okay and when the temperature is constant it means the distributing species or our sample should not undergo dissociation or association in any of the phase okay it should not undergo distribution it should not undergo dissociation or association in either solvent a or in solvent b otherwise this law can not be used okay so one basic thing is that we use it practically in practical application we just need the fraction of total solute in one or other phases okay we does not want to see here either it is going dissociation or association or any interaction with the other dissolved species so we use another form that is called the distribution ratio and it is symbolized by d okay it is also known as the extraction coefficient e we can denote it either by d or we can denote it by e so this d or this e is equal to c a a upon c c a in b it means here what is the c a this ca means all forms of all forms of solute in which of the form in any of the form the solute is present how many forms it can take but we have to take all the forms of solute so this thing is now valid because if the solute is dissociating or it is associating now it does not matter we are taking here all the forms of the solute and we are showing it by ca okay so this is the distribution ratio that is ca in small a upon ca in small b it means amount all the amount of solute in solvent a divided by all the amount of solute a in solvent b all right now see the next condition suppose we have given a solution in which in which two or more solutes are present suppose a and b these are two solutes that are present here now the condition becomes somewhat complex okay if we are doing the extraction of a suppose we are doing the extraction of a then b is also extracted to a little extent okay so this tech now what we are using we are using a different term that is called the separation coefficient separation coefficient and we are denoting it by beta beta is given by concentration of a in organic solvent divided by concentration of b in the organic solvent divided by concentration of a in water divided by concentration of b in water okay here we have taken two different solvents that are water and one is the organic solvent now we can rewrite it like this a in organic solvent divided by a in water okay and then we can write b in organic solvent divided by b in water so now you can see this one this one is called the distribution ratio of a and this one is called the distribution ratio of b so we can write it like this okay so in order to have a effective separation when we want a effective separation the this difference between da and db should be higher okay the distribution ratio difference should be higher for example see here suppose one example see here if we are taking da is equal to 10 okay and db is equal to 0.1 then in a single extraction if we are doing only one time extraction then a will remove 90.9% and b will remove 9.1% if we are doing second extraction it means we are repeating this process okay we are doing second time extraction then what will happen this percentage of a extracted will be 99.2% but this will also increase the percentage of the b okay so here the b will be 17.4% it means what we can say 
more the complete extraction of A. Higher we are extracting the A, there will also increase the contamination of B. It means some amount of B will also go with the A. Okay. So, with increasing the extractions, as we are increasing this one and one time, then what will happen? This contamination of B is also increasing. So, one thing is very clear that when one of the distribution is ratio is relatively higher and another one is very small, then the separation can be done very quickly. Okay. And when this extraction factor is large, but the distribution ratio is is of same magnitude. It means if both the substances, both the samples are having the same distribution ratio, then the extraction of both the components will occur. Okay. So, one thing you should remember here that the distribution ratio of the two substances, DA and DB, this should have a large gap. Okay. This should be higher and this should be lower. Then only you can do the extraction of one substance very rapidly. Okay. So, this is the whole theory. Uh, now, one very important thing that should you also know. What is the choice of solvent? How you can select the solvent? So, when we are taking any solvent for the extraction purpose. Suppose we have taken one of the aqua solution. Okay. We have taken the aqua solution of the sample. And then we need another solvent. Then the solvent should have the following properties. Firstly, it should have high distribution ratio for solute and a low distribution ratio for undesired properties. Clear? High distribution ratio for the solute and a low distribution ratio for the undesired properties so that these undesired properties cannot be extracted. Right? Second thing, low solubility in aqueous phase. If a substance has low solubility in the aqueous phase and a higher solubility in the organic phase, then it can be easily extracted. Third thing, it should have low toxicity and flammability. And fourth and very important thing is that ease of recovery of solute from solvent. It means once we have done the extraction of the solute in that second solvent, then it can be easily recovered from the solvents because we need it for the subsequent analytical processing. Okay. So, we want this solute alone. So, it can be easily recovered from the solvent. Okay. And then sometimes mixed solvents can also be used. We does not need that we are taking only one solvent. We can take a mixture of two or more solvents so that we can improve our separation technique. Okay. Now, this extraction, the solvent extraction that we are doing can be done in the two methods. One method is batch extraction. This can be done by the batch extraction method or it can be done by continuous extraction method. Actually, this batch method is most widely used method. This batch extraction method is most widely used and it is very convenient. In this method, we use the separatory funnel. Okay. So, whenever we are doing the separation by the separatory funnel, this is batch extraction method. And in this method, this method is used where a large distribution ratio for the desired separation is easily available. Okay. When there is large distribution ratio, then we can use batch extraction method. And continuous extraction method is used when there is low distribution ratio. Whenever you have given low distribution ratio, then you can not use batch extraction method. In this method, what you have to do? You have to do the continuous flow of the immiscible solvent through the solution. Okay. You are making a continuous flow of the organic solvent through the aqua solution of the sample so that you can do a better extraction. And this method is used when low distribution ratio is available. Okay, so this is whole thing about the solvent extraction method. I hope you will like this video. In our next lecture, we are starting chromatography, uh, one of the very important technique. Okay, so stay with us. And if you want to see some more videos of the analytical chemistry, you can go to our playlist of analytical chemistry. I will give you the link in the description box. And if you want some more topics in English, you can see our another playlist. Okay. And the Hindi videos are also available. Hindi videos you can see. I will publish them on Tuesday. Okay. So, if you have any query, you can comment me. And if you are liking the videos, then you can also comment me. And if you are liking videos, 
Please share it. Please like it. Thank you.